Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and in today's short video I'll be demonstrating how you can quickly make a watermark template and how you can apply it to your drawings and pictures. So if you're interested in seeing the process behind how I do watermarks, just keep on watching. So if you don't know what a watermark is, it's basically a way for an artist or creator to protect their content by placing either a logo or a text with their name that indicates that they were the original creator. If you ever receive advice from someone that says do not watermark your artwork or your photos, I would say probably to not follow that advice because if you upload your content without claiming it as your own, there is a very high likelihood that someone will take it and then claim it as theirs. So it's just a easy way for you to protect your own artwork and to prevent or at least deter people from trying to take your content and claim it as their own. So if you're familiar with any form of social media like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram especially, you'll also you'll see with the larger artists that they'll tend to watermark their art and that's just because you can have a lot of copycats out there who see how popular something is. So they'll take that very popular piece of art and they'll actually try to steal it and Put it on merchandise that they'll sell without giving any credit to the artist. So unfortunately this is actually quite common and I've actually known artists who've uploaded a fairly high resolution picture of their gorgeous artwork only to find out a week later that an unauthorized entity has stolen their art, put it on a t-shirt, or a print and they're reselling it without giving any of the credit or the profit to the original artist. So art theft is unfortunately a very common thing nowadays and because a lot of these activities are done outside of the country you're probably living in, it's very hard to go after legally these third parties that are doing the shady business. So to protect yourself, you really want to take this extra step to do watermarks and I'm going to show you the easy way that I found to do it for all of the pictures I upload to the internet. So hopefully it'll save you some time and give you ideas for producing your own watermarks. So I use Affinity Photo for all of my photo editing needs. I'll have a link to Affinity down below in the description box. And we're going to open the design that I have. So this is just my hand-drawn logo of Potato Art Studios. And this is just the JPEG image. And what I want to do is make this more suitable for a watermark. So what I'm planning on doing is putting all of the areas that are not the actual letters and the white fill of the letters, I'm going to set those areas to be transparent. So to do that, at first I'm going to unlock the layer by clicking the little padlock right here. I'm going to select the flood select tool. And because my design is fairly simple, I only have black and white, the selection wand should be very good at picking out the large areas of white that I wish to delete. So the biggest area is the border, so I'm going to click that. And you'll see that there's a dotted line that appears selecting the white area on the border. So I'm going to delete. And you'll know that the area I deleted is transparent because you'll see this white and gray checkerboard pattern. If you don't see this on your image after doing this step, you would have to go to document and make sure the transparent background option is selected. If you are using another photo editing program, it might be in a slightly different location, but you should have a similar option available to you. 
So I have the biggest area selected and deleted, and now we're just going to go and delete all of the smaller areas in between the letters. So because this is a little bit tedious, I'm going to just speed through this step. So to check that my background that I want to be transparent has been completely erased, I'm going to make a layer below my watermark. And I'm going to just flood the area with a very different color just to check. So I'm going to choose red. And you'll see that there are some artifacts. So in this area between the A and the R, there's a few little pixels. If that really bothers you, you can go in with a, a more accurate selection tool, which would be the freehand selection tool and delete that. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm fine with that. But the main area I forgot to delete is the area below the R. So I'm going to go back to the flood selection tool, select that area and delete. And I'm going to hide the red background layer. So right now I'll just save it as watermark three. So if you are planning on using this watermark in a similar size format um, multiple times. So for example, on Instagram, the standard size is a square and the resolution of images that I upload to Instagram is 800 by 800 pixels. So to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm actually going to s pretend that I have a 800, and eight 800 by 800 picture up and then resize the watermark in anticipation of how it would typically show up on a photo. So I'm going to go to document, resize canvas, and unlock the length and width so I can override that parameter. So I've set it to 800 by 800, click resize. And so you'll see that the my watermark is actually quite large and this is a bit too big. I think if I had a watermark this size on my drawing, it would be quite distracting because it's so large. So I'm actually going to scale this down quite a bit. So to scale your watermark, you just have the move tool selected and Affinity does a center line snap. So you'll see that when I slide the logo over, it'll snap and show this green line. So that shows that the logo is centered with the center of the document. And I'm just going to scale it down and it'll snap again. So doing this step will make it much easier for you to just basically drag your watermark onto your picture when you're ready to prep your photo to be Instagram or Facebook ready. So now I'm going to save and I'm going to export. And in this export setting page, there are several different options for watermarks, you want to make sure that the background is transparent. And so the file format that I find best is a PNG. So the PNG shows that the file size is 800 by 800, which is again what I plan on uploading and I'll export it. So I'll call it watermark 800 by 800 just to make sure that I keep a note for myself. And that's it for this stage. So this video is getting a little bit long, so we're going to stop the watermark tutorial here. I will be uploading a second part of this watermark tutorial later this week, probably on Friday or Saturday. So if you're interested in seeing part two, I will be uploading that later this week. 
So if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe, turn on your notifications so that you'll get an email saying that the next video is up. That second part will cover how to insert your watermark over your photo or your artwork in Affinity Photo. And it will also cover a little bit about adjusting the layer properties to make the watermark blend more seamlessly into your file. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.